Today's episode is about colorful autumn trees. I'll show you some great techniques to make fine scale miniature trees in fall colors using easily available materials and moderate effort. In my last video on tree making, I showed in detail how I use woodland scenic armatures, some sea foam and woodland scenic turf to make some great generic trees, link in the card above. Today I'll continue on the topic to show how I make some excellent fall trees like these ones here using some variations of the same techniques. First, I'll go over some basic steps quickly. I use Woodland Scenics armatures for large trees. Currently I'm modeling an end scale so the trees are made with that proportion in mind. I start by removing all sprue marks from the plastic armature using a knife. You can use a hobby knife as I showed in my last video, however I have noticed that using a heavier box cutter knife makes the cutting task much easier. I also clean the seam lines by rubbing the knife along them. Once the sprue marks are removed, I carve some bark texture in the areas where I removed material from. Next I use a needle nose plier to bend and shape the armature. The shape depends on the type of trees that I'm making. For these trees, I'm using sycamore and American birch as references. I looked up the shape, size, bark color and texture, leaf sizes, etc. in Google to make sure that I'm making a believable tree. While shaping the armature, I use those reference pictures to ensure that the shape is right and believable. Next item to enter the stage is sea foam. Here you see the small and irregular pieces in the white box and more well-preserved and tree-like shapes in the black box. Small and irregular pieces that cannot be used to make trees on their own will be used to make branches of bigger trees, shrubs, and bushes. I spread the collection of small sea foam twigs on the work table and select the most suitable one for a particular branch. I use gel type super glue to attach these twigs to the plastic armature. The plan is to make the birch tree full of leaves in fall colors, while the sycamore would have a more airy feel having lost many leaves and showing a lot more twigs and branches. Once all the twigs are attached to the armature, it is time to start painting. For these set of trees, I'll be using just spray paints. Now given how harmful these paints are, I'm wearing a protective mask and I've taken the show outdoors to my balcony. Sycamores have light gray bark in the upper branches, however the twigs are often darker gray or brown. Birch trees often have very light gray bark as well. The trunk often becomes dark brown in mature trees for both species. I start by giving the sycamore tree a thorough coat of light gray. I shake the can well before spraying. Notice that I'm spraying intermittently from a distance of about 12 to 15 inches. The intermittent spraying controls the application while the distance ensures that the paint is almost dry when it hits the trunk of the tree to create a rough bark-like texture. Once the base coat of light gray is applied, I move to deep gray for shading the twigs. Here I'm spraying from the side to ensure that the deep gray avoids the branches and the trunk as much as possible. Next was brown to bring variation in shades in the twigs and the trunk of the tree. Note that controlling the spray intensity is the trick to achieve great results. For the other tree, I followed the same steps except that I used white instead of light gray as the base coat. I wanted a vibrant highlight in the armature for this tree. Moreover, the next coats of gray and brown added the required shading on top of the base color. This is how the trees looked at this stage. Next step was to add foliage. I used Woodland Scenic's coarse turf in yellow and rust plus two shades of green. I started with the birch tree. As you can see, the structure is pretty dense and tight for this tree, and I wanted this tree to have all shades of leaves since I'm modeling the onset of fall. First, I poured some matte medium to a water paint palette and also took turf of all four colors in a separate tray. Notice that yellow is the dominant color. I then dabbed some matte medium to the hard to reach twigs and branches using a paintbrush. I mixed a little green turf with yellow and pressed it lightly on these twigs. For the branches on top, I took a faster path. I sprayed the twigs with heavy hairspray and then applied the mix of turf. I had to apply the hairspray a few times to ensure that everything holds properly. In this method, the turf often gets to the trunk and lower branches, so I used a pair of tweezers to do a little cleanup afterwards. Next step is to add leaves. Sycamore leaves are up to 9 inches in length, whereas birch leaves are up to 5 inches. When converted to end scale, the leaf size of 0.5 to 1.5 mm fits the bill. However, most commercially available leaves have a mix of larger sizes. 
At first, I took my Scenic Express bag of yellow super leaf. Yellow is my primary color. I used a strainer to separate the fine leaves from the bag in a separate bucket. The larger leaves are not put back in the bag, but left in a different container for future HO scale projects. For the brown and green leaves, I took a dried almond leaf of suitable color and put it in a grinder. Since the leaves are light, using the whip option for intermittent operation works best because keeping the grinder in full throttle will only make the light leaf particles to stick to the ceiling of the container. Here you see the ground leaf. Notice the fine powder deposit on the lid of the grinder. I'll show you how I use that for a totally different purpose later on. I again used a sieve to separate the finer pieces for my purpose. Coarse leaves are kept for future projects. Here is a close-up of the leaves of two colors in two grain sizes, fine and coarse. Also, here is a comparison with the mini nature silver leaves, something that I'll be using very soon. For the birch tree, I sprayed the tree lightly with hairspray and then sprinkled the leaves on top. Notice that I'm continuing with a mix of yellow, rust and green for this tree to show different colors of fall leaves. For the sycamore, I took a totally different approach. I wanted a very airy feel that shows the beautiful branches and individual leaves. Idea was also to simulate that the tree has lost many leaves even in early fall, which happens in real life due to certain diseases in trees. So I did not use any turf for this tree. First, I sprayed the top of the seafoam twigs with heavy-duty hairspray and then I simply sprinkled the leaves on the twigs. Notice that I'm sprinkling to the side to avoid the leaves falling down directly on the trunk. I kept on adding layers of hairspray to ensure that the leaves are bonding properly to the branches and then kept on adding the leaves. Finally, everything was sealed using spray dull coat lacquer. Now, I wanted to add some special details on the trunk like peeling and lenticel. I took the super fine brown almond leaf powder that I collected from the lid of the grinder. Then I mixed the powder with acrylic matte medium to make a fine paste. I then applied that paste on the trunk. First, I dabbed the paste and then I made some horizontal strokes using my paintbrush. Then I left it to dry. Once dried, I applied some liquid dull coat lacquer using a paintbrush. I left the trees again to dry. This application of powder, medium and lacquer creates a very thin opaque layer on the trunk. Once the lacquer cured, I took a pair of tweezers and pressed hard on the thin layer of matte medium and lacquer. The surface broke where I pressed and created a peeling bark and lenticel effect that you see in many trees. Finally, here are two awesome fine scale autumn trees to grace any model train layout or diorama. The leaf sizes are matched for my end scale model train layout, but the method or even these trees themselves should work pretty well for HO, OO or 1 is to 72 scale scenes. I am very happy with the results, especially the sycamore tree. I really like the intricate branch structure and the realistic effect individual leaves create. Now, how else would you model a fine scale tree with intricate details? Have you tried any other methods that yielded at par, if not better results? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and wish to catch you soon in the next episode. Bye.